Not so long ago we've discussed the idea behind alchemy, or I guess technically, cosmological alchemy. Basically the ability of the universe to create gold from lighter elements, for example iron. And in that video we've discussed a somewhat recent explanation for how a very bizarre, very powerful emission in 2004 seems to have produced a huge amount of gold through a very powerful flare around a magnetar. In this case it produced approximately one Mars worth of gold, or by mass approximately one tenth of planet Earth. But in this video we're actually going to discuss a slightly different type of this alchemy that happened right here on planet Earth inside what's known as Alice Detector, a detector used by CERN in its extremely powerful particle collider. And so in this video let's discuss this particular study you can find in the description, where researchers part of the Alice collaboration discovered a completely new way gold seems to be generated inside various particle colliders. And in this case, from lead, which by itself is actually kind of symbolic and kind of important. But just for funsies, let's briefly discuss alchemy and its history, and specifically the concept known as chrysopoeia, from ancient Greek for gold making. With the image of Ouroboros right here, used by ancient alchemists to represent this idea. And although technically alchemists pursued many different goals, one of the main goals, especially for some of the latest alchemists, was to try to create gold or silver from other metals, usually lead. And specifically because lead and gold actually do have very similar density, and so a lot of ancient alchemists assume that it should not be too difficult to turn one into the other. And technically they've been trying to do this for nearly 1500 years. For example, this particular idea was initially described back in 3rd century AD initially described by Cleopatra the alchemist, not to be confused with Cleopatra from Egypt. And so this Greek alchemist was one of the first to propose that it should be possible to convert stuff into gold by using specific alchemical processes. And so by 16th and 17th century, alchemists developed a lot of advanced techniques, with many of them serving as a basis for future science, specifically medicine and chemistry. And that's because in the process they were also able to create things like pigments and certain chemical substances. But they were never able to reach the dream of crossopoeia. The lead was never transmuted into gold. And for one simple reason. Back then we still had no idea gold and lead were completely different elements with an entirely different number of protons and neutrons. Naturally because the periodic table would not exist for another 200 years. But in the last few decades this idea came much closer to fruition, or basically, by using science, researchers were actually able to transmute one thing to another, obviously not through alchemy, through the process of nucleosynthesis. And one of the first and most well-known attempts was back in the early 1980s, specifically March of 1981. Back then, scientists from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California definitively found a way to convert bismuth into gold. In this case, bismuth and gold are extremely close to each other on the periodic table. And so here, through the process of particle collision, they were able to remove four protons from bismuth in order to produce gold. But because these were powerful collisions, they also removed a bunch of neutrons, usually anywhere from 6 to 15. And this actually created a bunch of different gold isotopes, including some that were radioactive. And that's exactly how they were able to confirm that gold was present. Even though the amount of gold was extremely small, by detecting radiation coming from unstable gold nuclei, they were able to confirm that gold was indeed there, and it was actually decaying for at least one year. But because of the way it was produced, some of these gold atoms were also stable and were extremely similar to your typical gold we usually use in jewelry. But obviously this was not a cheap process. Here a single hour of the experiment was at least $5,000. Which means that by using this method to create one ounce, it would probably cost over one quadrillion dollars in total. Even though the gold is pretty expensive today, over 3000 US per ounce, it's not quadrillion. So yeah, not a very efficient way. But this was using bismuth and not lead. And that's because generally bismuth is just a little bit easier to separate from gold, because it's generally a much more homogeneous element. Lead though has proven to be somewhat challenging. And so basically trying to turn lead into gold apparently is not as easy. But in this new study researchers discovered an intriguing new method. A method that has actually turned a lot of lead into gold in many different particle colliders, 
through a process that we didn't know about before. With this new study measuring the transmutation of lead into gold that apparently has been happening inside the Large Hadron Collider for many, many years. Now, normally in a typical collider, the main purpose is to literally collide atoms or to create these powerful collisions that then form quark gluon plasma representing an extremely hot and very dense state of matter somewhat similar to what the universe was like in the first millionth of a second. But these collisions are not very frequent and the much more likely result is a near miss or essentially two atoms passing very close but not really touching, just interacting through other means. And apparently when this happens, because these atoms are moving super fast and also because many of them contain a lot of protons which produce electromagnetic fields, this in theory can actually induce a type of an electromagnetic interaction as these two atoms pass close enough. In some sense you can imagine this as basically two magnets moving very close to each other at ridiculously high speeds. But for atoms of lead, their electromagnetic field is particularly strong. Here lead contains 82 protons which produce quite a powerful elementary charge. Moreover, at very high velocities of 99.999993% of the speed of light, as they move across from each other, because of the Einsteinian principles, instead of having magnetic lines around the atom, here relativistic effects force the electromagnetic field to become a kind of an extremely thin pancake-like object. Which means that when these two atoms pass close to each other, it's sort of like having two pancakes smack each other at a very high velocity. And turns out that this produces a very short-lived pulse of photons, which can then influence one of the atoms. This triggers a process known as electromagnetic dissociation. And here these photons can interact with anything, but sometimes they interact with the nucleus, which very often causes the oscillation of the structure, resulting in the ejection of small number of neutrons or protons. And sometimes these 82 protons become 79 protons. And so basically when three protons escape, lead becomes gold. And so based on this theory, researchers decided to analyze approximately three years of observations from Large Hadron Collider, discovering that it indeed produced quite a lot of heavy stuff. And you can see some of it right here. There was quite a lot of thallium, quite a lot of mercury, but the third most common element was gold, with some other stuff visible in this image. And according to the calculations, gold seems to be produced at a rate of about 89,000 nuclei per second during a typical run inside Large Hadron Collider. And once again, all of this was just the result of these lead-lead collisions, or near collisions, inside the particle accelerator. And so during run 2, which lasted for 3 years between 2015 and 2018, this resulted in a production of 86 billion gold nuclei, or approximately 29 picograms. So yeah, still quite expensive and very inefficient, but technically this was transmutation after all. Except that for alchemists, they were trying to get rich. Uh, yeah, this would not work in this case. Moreover, all of these atoms only lasted for a fraction of a second, mostly because they usually collided with something afterwards, fragmenting into protons, neutrons and other particles. And that's actually how scientists were able to detect them. By detecting collisions inside the zero degree calorie matter, they were able to count the number of gold nuclei destroyed inside the accelerator. And so basically extracting this gold would also be out of the question. But for science though, this is still a pretty cool discovery. It basically confirms that atoms can transmute just through these electromagnetic interactions, especially if they're moving really fast. And for particle accelerators and for particle physicists, this allows them to recalibrate certain particle colliders in order to reduce energetic losses and to improve future performance. And so the idea proposed by Cleopatra the alchemist approximately 1700 years ago has now been officially put to practice. Maybe not in the same way as she described, or maybe she was onto something after all. Because I mean, if you squint your eyes here and sort of ignore the fact that this is a snake, also known as Ouroboros, what if she was actually describing a particle accelerator? Oh my god, I just discovered some kind of a conspiracy theory, didn't I? On that note, uh, don't tell Joe Rogan because I'm sure he's going to invite a bunch of people to talk about this. And we'll definitely come back and talk more about these ideas of transmutation or technically nucleosynthesis as scientists discover more, especially by looking around the universe. On that note, check out the previous video in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.